Poor Little VisiCalc. When it first came out around 1980, it revolutionized the personal computer industry, turning a PC into an essential business tool. But VisiCalc is largely gone these days, replaced by Lotus 123 and a whole new generation of sophisticated spreadsheet software. Today, we begin a special two-part look at spreadsheets on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chuffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, this is VisiCalc, and it's a spreadsheet program. If I change the entry in one particular cell, for example, all the rest of the numbers change to reflect that. How did it happen that VisiCalc was the first piece of spreadsheet software, but obviously Lotus 123 has now come to dominate this field? Well, the Apple II is always accepted in education, and VisiCalc really brought it, the Apple II into the business market mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Lotus 123 came out with a, well, right after the IBM PC, really used the power of the IBM PC, improved the spreadsheet model, added graphics, database processing, and really became a standard before the competition hit. Yeah. Now, as a result of that, it's become the center of a whole bunch of software add-ons. Gary, today we're going to take a look at some Lotus 123 add-ons. We'll look at a low-cost alternative to 123 and some high-end competitors. Now, one of the biggest things in spreadsheet software right now is something called add-ins to Lotus 123, and we're going to begin with a report on that. At the San Mateo, California office of Dean Witter, brokers rely on computers for a variety of tasks, from transmitting exchange floor trades to managing financial portfolios. Investment counselor David Huggins uses one of the most popular spreadsheet programs, Lotus 123, to manage his clients' accounts. Since numbers can be added or changed by more than one person, Mr. Huggins has installed a notation program called Note-It, which attaches notepad windows to individual spreadsheet cells. The notes can add details or clarify changes made by other users. Noted is one of a group of software programs commonly called add-ins, which operate within the spreadsheet environment. Add-in developers claim that these enhancements are different from pop-up memory resident programs because they were developed in cooperation with the software developer, in this case, Lotus. The add-in concept could be seen as a new approach to integrated software. Instead of writing a word processor with math functions, why not give a spreadsheet the ability to manipulate text? Along with Noted, the office has installed Forward, a word processing add-in. Calling up Forward shifts you to a word processing screen with the added function of integrating numbers right off the spreadsheet. Changes made to the spreadsheet are ported to the Forward document as well. One of the newest additions to the add-in category is a spelling checker, which helps you weed out embarrassing errors, although it won't correct your math. Add-ins may not have all the features of your favorite software package, but as alternatives to a library of uncooperative programs, they offer a clever way to add functions to your existing software at a very modest price. Joining us now in the studio is Larry Gross, co-developer of HAL. And next to Larry is Sam Savage, chairman of General Optimization. They make something called What's Best. Gary? Uh, Larry, you and Sam both have a, it's called a Lotus add-on. Uh, it's the product of Lotus add-on. What is, what is an add-on? Well, an add-on is a product that enhances the functionality of 123. HAL, 
uh, adds a way of uh, getting new functions out of one, two, three. Uh, what's best uh, add some optimization to one, two, three. Okay, and there are several add-ons, I suppose, for, for Lotus that are out there and available to the customers. What, now, uh, typically, is this a, what they, uh, it's called a TSR, a Terminate, terminate and Stay Resident? It's a, a RAM resident program? Well, HAL isn't a Terminate and Stay Resident mm -hmm. program. HAL loads when you load when when you load HAL, it loads HAL and one two three, okay. and then when you quit, it it quits both of them okay. as well. Can you show us a little bit about how HAL works? Yeah, sure. Uh, here we are in one two three. We can uh, move around the worksheet like we always have with the arrow keys. You can press the slash key and get the one two three menu up at the top. The difference with HAL loaded is you can s press the backslash key and get this request box up here. And what you can do now is you can type English phrases in here and, and do operations. So if I type get quotas, how will go ahead and retrieve the quotas file for me. If I wanted to go ahead now with this file and total this column, I can say total this column. And how will go ahead and total that for me, just like that, draw a line and, and put the at sum formula in the worksheet for me. If I didn't want to do that, I can press the backspace key and how reverses its last action, which is real handy because it even reverses the one, two, th any one, two, three action that you can do. So, for instance, if I did slash worksheet erase, yes, and uh, to realize that I just accidentally erased my whole worksheet without uh, saving the previous one, I can press the backspace key and it'll bring mm -hmm. it right back for me, a real time saver. Uh, Lifesaver as well. I can also do graphics real easily with HAL, which in one, two, three require a lot of uh, setup normally. I can just say graph this, and HAL will go ahead and figure out all the ranges for me and just graph uh, all the data and label the x-axis. Does it go to a certain set of default parameters when it does Yes, uh-huh. And it, it'll just make the graph for me like that. If I wanted to do a database uh, operation or query, let me get a database up here called Baseball. And it's a bunch of baseball players and their statistics. It could be anything, though. You, if you wanted to find out who has more than 30 home runs, you could just type that in. Who has more than 30 home runs? And how will go ahead down at the bottom and give you a list of all the players that have more than 30 home mm. runs just that easily like that. If you wanted to find something real fast, you could just say, find 11. And how will find in your database the first occurrence of the mm -hmm. number 11. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just just for clarification, this uh, I assume that this doesn't take any just any natural language input. The format itself is a fairly specific one, right. so just not to be misleading. Right, <laughs> there's uh, some syntax uh, uh, associated with this, but it's real easy to pick up because mm -hmm, it is sure. so English-like. For instance, if I wanted to just uh, I can clear the worksheet. Hal's also great for building worksheets from scratch, like. For instance, I, I want to make a worksheet with some months across. I can say put months across. And how will just put all the months all the way to December across. If I want to insert a column, I can just say insert a column. And I can abbreviate my request to just three characters of the, of the word. If I want to put some letters in, I can say put A to G. And it'll put it in. I can say move this column down to. And it'll move it down. If I want to underline this row, I can say underline this row. And it'll go ahead and do that. If I wanted to uh, put some more numbers in January, say, I can say put 100 to 106 in Jan. It'll do that. I can project those numbers. I can say project uh, Jan across by, say, 15%. And it'll go ahead and just project mm -hmm, all the way to mm -hmm, December mm -hmm. across. If I don't like the format of that, I can say format this and how we'll format it to the uh, to two decimal places. And if I then wanted to total all the columns, I can say total all calls. It'll mm -hmm. total all the columns. And if then I finally want to just graph this, I can say graph this, and it'll mm -hmm. make a graph. Mm -hmm. Can you get out of Hal? And I want to have Sam uh, give us a chance to put what's best up there. Sure. And, and while he's doing that, Sam, give us a little introduction to what's best. What, what does it do? Well, we've taken a uh, mathematical technique known as linear programming that uh, members of the audience who've been to business school probably remember with horror. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important uh, algebraic technique used on mainframe computers mostly for doing things like routing airplanes or producing things in factories from limited inventories, cash flow management, and that sort of thing. Uh, and as I say, it's very algebraic. Well, why don't you get the program up and actually show us what it does? What we've done with <clears throat> what's best is really use Lotus 1, 2, 3 to penetrate the algebraic curtain, it gets us to the other side so that the average manager can perform these things on his desktop. Okay, what's the problem here? Now, here we have a staffing problem. Imagine that you are, oh, staffing a police force and you need 180 people on Monday, 160 on Tuesday, a non-uniform staff requirement. And in addition, uh, 
the policemen have to be hired on a five-day basis, so that if I go to Monday and hire 180 to start on Monday, you can see by the graph that, that they're working straight through until Friday. Mm -hmm. Now notice that I'm short on Friday. I need, I need 10 there. So let's put in 10 more. And now I'm short on Saturday. I need 130. At this stage, the good news is that I have my requirements covered. But the bad news is the people who started on Saturday are now sitting on the laps yeah. of the people the following Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now, we can use Lotus uh, to play what if with this, but it's really like Rubik's Cube on a screen. You could work for <laughs> hours without getting your cost down. Notice that our total cost is $64,000, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'll bring up what's best to solve this model. I hit the asterisk key, and our help menu appears over Lotus. Uh, we have now taken over the 10 function keys of the computer, and those are really the only commands in what's best. F1 is optimize. I'm going to press that now. And our program unloads Lotus 1, 2, 3. It now comes in and translates that WKS file, the Lotus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. format file, and performs this linear programming technique on it, which has been around on the mainframes for so long. Uh, Again, optimize is what? Explain what we're trying to accomplish. In this particular case, we're trying to minimize the total cost of staffing. Get that $64,000 figure down. To and in fact, it's down to 44000 but a picture here tells just a thousand words. In this case, mm -hmm. because we had a uh -huh. slightly doctored example, we got a perfect match. But you will always get the mathematically optimal match. And what's it really doing? Give us, give us the underlying theory here. The underlying theory is based on, on about uh, 40 years worth of applied <laughs> mathematics that you really don't want to know about. And I think uh, it's, it's very technical stuff uh, that we try to hide from the user. Okay, that's very impressive. Thank you, Hal. And what's best, in just a minute, we'll meet Adam Osborne and find out about VP Planner. So stay with us. With us now is Adam Osborne, well-known in a variety of contexts, but right now is president of Paperback Software, the makers of VP Planner. Gary? Uh, Adam, you know, it seems like the, uh, everybody's accepted Lotus as being the standard spreadsheet. And now you have VP Planner that has uh, similarities with Lotus. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, actually, uh, VP Planner is a database program. It has a multi-dimensional database, and it also has DBase file capabilities. The spreadsheet portion of VP Planner is the user interface. It happens to be a Lotus worker-like, which mm -hmm. means that if you have any Lotus uh, templates, worksheets, macros, etc., it will run under the VP Planner spreadsheet. However, VP Planner has some very, very powerful and unique database capabilities, which uh, probably what I should really uh, concentrate on showing over here. Um, what I'm going to do is show you a multi-dimensional database that we have for a typical computer store. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, uh, the store is keeping its uh, accounting information by time, obviously, but it's dividing it up by product and also by salesperson. So here we have our various dimensions to start with. Time. We have uh, the months. Then we uh, move on to... Accounts. In accounts, you'll notice that, in fact, we have budgets, we have actuals, and we have variances. Mm -hmm. Moving right along, we keep all of that information by product line with subtotals. So you can say by all IBM compatible, by software, etc. And then finally, we've also got it by salesperson. Wrong one. There we are, salesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, you can keep building all the logic as well. It's not just the... Uh, a, a dumb entry. You can actually put in all the equations you need. I'll just show you one of them here because everyone recognizes the four quarters and the year. And then automatically consolidate all of this information in the database, not having to do it in the spreadsheet. Therefore, if you use VP Planner, you never again have a problem of linking spreadsheets, and you never have a problem with large spreadsheets. You see, Lotus really doesn't have a database. The only data you can keep in Lotus is what you can put into a spreadsheet. In this case, all of the data is out in a multidimensional database, and what we do is we will just write spreadsheets that will do specific tasks connecting automatically with uh, mm -hmm. that part of the multidimensional database it needs. 
So effectively, instead of having a spreadsheet in memory, it really basically flows onto the disk in a sense. Basically, that's right, yes. Well, now I'll just uh, bring up a spreadsheet. Uh, try that one over here. Uh, this is a totally Lotus 123 compatible spreadsheet. It'll run in anything that uh, Lotus will run. In addition, of course, we do have a DBase file interface. You can create DBase files, you can retrieve by field, by record, you can do joins, you can do virtually anything you could normally do in DBase. The result is that VP Planner allows you to break up big spreadsheets into lots of little ones with all of your data sitting out on disk, mm -hmm. just bringing in whatever you want into any particular spreadsheet at the time you need it. Very different. Mm -hmm. Adam, you've shown us a lot of powerful features of VP Planner from the uh, user's point of view. One very powerful feature is the price. It's only about $100. How can you sell this for $100 when the competing products uh, seeming to have the same thing are $500? Well, we do it a completely different way. You see, my belief is the best programmers work for themselves. They don't work for other companies. We have developed none of this software. Outside the authors bring it all to us. We write the manual. We help them make it you know, the interface right. But then we pay them a royalty which they use in order to keep updating and improving the software in the future. The result is we run our company on 35 people. They have a thousand. <laughs> and that's the difference in price. In just a minute, we're going to take a look at Javelin and Silk, two highly rated competitors in the spreadsheet marketplace. So stay with us. With us now in the studio is Eric Geyer, Vice President for Marketing with Daybreak Technologies, the makers of Silk. And also with us is Robert Furman, Chairman and CEO of Javelin Software. Robert, your uh, particular software package had an unusual price change here uh, recently. It went from $700 down to $100, and I guess back up to two now. Uh, right. Can you give us a little bit of background behind that? Well, our major obstacle in marketing this product is the entrenched user base with spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And to get around that, we decided to seed the market at $100 for two and a half months. That worked exceedingly well. We now have one of the larger installed bases, we think, <laughs> okay. uh, worldwide, and now we've settled at $200 as our longer-term price. Uh -huh. Great. Eric, um, now you have a product called Silk. And this is, again, uh, Lotus-like, uh, based on that uh, idea. Can you tell well, us about Silk? Uh, Silk recognizes uh, the, the dominance of Lotus in the marketplace mm -hmm. and the fact that the installed base is very large. So we use a similar user interface. And we performed the same functions, about 99% of the functions of Lotus, and then took the technology further than that to okay. establish it as an advanced. Okay, uh, Silk is one of the newer uh, spreadsheet products, which just recently came out. Show us what it does. Well, uh, Silk is a, a straightforward spreadsheet, and the most common application is, um, of course, a time series model. And what we do is we use a series of windows uh, with the product to help the user through so he always knows where he is. Time series model is the most common application and what we do is build the time series model with essentially four keystrokes. Define the period and then define the fields. Mm -hmm. You can define the fields in English and all the relationships are automatically linked. We have a, a number of very interesting features in regard to a time series model and they're integrated features that have to do with the help screen that it follows you around context sensitively mm -hmm. throughout the program, but allows you to work in the worksheet simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And to our knowledge, there is no other help system of this type. Additionally, we have uh, a way of validating the spreadsheet. So if I were to change the, relation the numbers because the relationships are built in here and made the cost of goods sold to be only $100 here, and then I went back to the worksheet and I validated it, and I want to know all the errors and warnings, the worksheet is basically telling me I, I have a problem, and the cursor is limited mm -hmm. in the problems. Now, of course, so I you may can't not, get out of there until you solve the problem. Basically, unless I go out of validation, yeah. I mm -hmm. can always escape out of that. But if I hit the help, the help key, it's telling me uh, what the problem is mm -hmm. and how to fix it. And basically, we have an inappropriate relationship here. So I have to. So you have a number which is out problem. of the range of criteria you've established for that Indeed. particular kind Indeed. of data. So it's kind of a spelling checker of spreadsheets. <laughs> uh, in a word. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it is a unique feature in yeah, that way. Yeah. You know, I can do other things as well, of course, with the help uh, system, uh, including help and commands. Right. It eliminates the need for extensive. Now you've got a recovery function, which is kind of impressive to demonstrate that. Uh, if we assume by simply warm booting 
the computer that the plug was pulled. Okay, or there's I a power failure, and you're in the middle of a big spreadsheet. And it's uh, and we've got some real problems at the moment because we have no, we we've never saved. Okay. Any of our data. So what I'm doing basically is rebooting the computer again, uh, which is taking us, of course, a couple of seconds here, and it's sending me back to to the operating system. If I go back to where Silk is mm -hmm. and go back to our access system, I have a number of choices here. We were logging everything we had done previously, so I'm just going to recover the key. Uh, hit F2, and basically I've got fast forward and recovering every keystroke in the previous work session. I can stop it at any time hitting any key and then use the space bar. So to it go automatically on time. logs and keeps track of every keystroke, and if disaster strikes, it's all still there in the record. Absolutely. Can I ask you to get out of Silk? Because I want to take a look at Javelin Surely. in just a second, Eric. And uh, while he's doing that, give us a little introduction to Javelin, Robert. Well, Javelin's based on the idea that the important thing in, in doing any business analysis is not calculating numbers but being able to understand your business and being able to communicate your analysis to someone else. Mm -hmm. On the screen right here, I have a worksheet on the top screen. It shows cash and cash balance. In the bottom, I have a um, graph, which is automatically generated as I move through this worksheet. And you see these different items are being graphed as I go through them. Mm -hmm. Now, to support the contention that you have to understand your business to be able to model it, I'm going to show you a diagram view which shows that cash flow is a function of these two items coming into it. And we're going to go back through that and see that, in fact, cash flow itself is derived from this curve. Mm -hmm. Cash does not all come in at once, but in fact comes in over several months. I drew that in in just a few seconds. If we go back a little further, we see that car sales um, is the ultimate input variable uh, for these things. Why don't we do a uh, chart view of what we call pre-tax income and go up to uh, the other window and do a chart view of foreign sales as a percent of pre-tax income. And we're going to do something that formerly only used to be done in CAD CAM and engineering. As I move the uh, data in the top graph, as you see. So you're and using then, the cursor key to change the shape of the graph. That's correct. And the numbers are following. And you'll see that the numbers changed in the outcome, which was the pre-tax income. Okay. Javelin also has the capability to have as many totally automatically dynamically linked worksheets uh, as you can build, and they each take very little memory. This one is a monthly worksheet showing sales. I'm going to insert columns simply by hitting the insert key. That's all I have to do to do that, and add in quarters. So I've added in two quarters there, and now I can do the year without doing any kind of formula work, mm -hmm. I've automatically generated these numbers. Mm -hmm. So I've saved time and I've saved errors. Javelin's presentation graphics, of course, are really quite nice and extremely quick. That's mm -hmm. a bar graph, that's one of seven. Um, and just to show you one other one, we have, we think, the roundest pie chart <laughs> <laughs> in the business. The principle, again, of Javelin is the point of modeling is to understand your business. Javelin is completely geared to help you understand it and communicate your model to other people. Okay, gentlemen, two impressive demos, Silk and Javelin. That's the first half of our look at spreadsheet software. We'll be back next week with more, so make sure you're there with us. Right now, stay tuned for this week's Computer News. In the random access file this week, spreadsheets in the news. First of all, Microsoft is taking on Lotus by releasing the PC version of its Excel spreadsheet, originally written for the Macintosh. The PC Excel has a graphic interface, which takes advantage of the new graphics capabilities of the PS2 computers. Some critics say the PC version of Excel is not as fast nor as robust as the original Mac version. Lotus is fighting back by saying it'll come out early next year with 123 for the Macintosh. Lotus is promising details on the Mac 123 at the January Macworld Expo in San Francisco. And Lotus is also protecting itself against Quattro, the new Borland spreadsheet for the PC. Lotus says it now has an enhancement called SpeedUp, which does recalculations faster by only recalculating cells in which there is a change. That is one of the features of Quattro. Lotus says SpeedUp also remembers keystrokes, thus making macro writing easier. Easier. One, two, three users can get speed up free from some dealers or directly from Lotus for a $20 fee. 
Despite all the talk of the new assault on 123 by Borland, Microsoft, and others, one Lotus fan says for a new spreadsheet to replace Lotus, it'll have to cure cancer, taste like chocolate, and sell for a dollar. Despite a somewhat shaky reception, IBM says sales of PS2 computers are doing well and that the one millionth PS2 computer will be shipped sometime this month. IBM says PC sales are up 40% from last year, though analysts say IBM's share of the PC marketplace is still falling due to the continuing assault of the clones. Epson, which came out with one of the first laptop computers back in 1981, has re-entered the laptop field with a 640K MS-DOS portable called the Equity LT. It has a backlit screen and suggested retail price of $18.95. Epson is also offering a hard disk version at $29.95. Time for this week's software review, and here's Paul Schindler. People who bill other people for their time, accountants, lawyers, consultants, spend a lot of their time wadding up their money and throwing it away if they can't keep track of who they talk to for how long about what projects. In a big company, there's systems for keeping track of time and billing for it. Well, now a sole practitioner can do it too at a reasonable price with time slips. The $100 price is a real breakthrough. Now, time slips is another of the increasing number of programs which make good use of color to help you see what's going on. Here, what's going on is that the clock is ticking. You can decide later whether to bill at the rate for the consultant involved, for the particular customer, or for the activity. You can even choose whether to bill for the activity or not. And although it doesn't show on the screen, the program's memory residence so you can flip into and out of it while working on something else. Time Slips generates a bewildering variety of useful reports, too. It's the best, cheapest professional time billing program we've seen. Time Slips is $100 from North Edge Software in Hamilton, Massachusetts. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The House Telecommunications Subcommittee has begun hearings on the FCC's proposal to raise telephone access charges for users of online services. FCC Commissioner Dennis Patrick testified in favor of the rate hike, saying online users would simply be paying the same rates as long-distance voice users. Massachusetts Representative Ed Markey testified against the rate hike, saying it would inhibit the growth of online services and would mean only the wealthy could afford to access information services. October is Computer Learning Month, a celebration of the use of computers in the classroom, sponsored by the Software Publishers Association. There are contests for students and a variety of print support materials. If you're interested in getting more information about Computer Learning Month, write to the address on your screen. Finally, if you're into decision support software, here is the ultimate program. It's called Ask God. It's purportedly an AI program that accesses the entire King James Version of the Bible and lets you conduct a dialogue with the software to find out what advice the Bible has about a particular area of conduct. Ask God is made by Integrated Systems and Information of Kirkland, Washington. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.